As we've gone through our journey through the cell, we've talked about some of the organelles that occur in the cell. Today we're going to talk about protein synthesis, which is going to primarily deal with ribosomes. You'll see there are a few other structures involved, but the ribosome is the primary structure for protein synthesis. This whole concept of one gene, one protein, really means that only one protein is made by a single gene. So when we talk about a particular gene, like let's say a gene that codes for hair color, that particular gene only makes one protein, and we'll see why that's important later on. The idea is that they're very specific for what they make. A gene is really just a section of DNA that codes for that specific protein. So it's just a series of those letters that we've discussed before, A's, T's, G's, and C's, in a specific region on a chromosome. Proteins, in terms of proteins, the order and the number of amino acids that are used in order to make up the protein are specific for each protein we make. So remember, the building blocks of a protein are amino acids. We put several amino acids together, sometimes thousands of amino acids together, in order to make up what we would call a protein, which is just a long chain of amino acids. We call it a polypeptide sometimes. But in order to make a specific protein, let's say the protein keratin, which deals with some of your hair and nail structures, the number of or and order that you put the amino acids together makes a difference. It's specific for every protein. Some examples of proteins in the body include things like antibodies, which help to fight off disease, hormones, which help to regulate all sorts of body processes like controlling blood sugar levels and metabolism, enzymes, which control most of our chemical reactions, cell structures, and the cell membrane. We have proteins that are embedded in the cell membrane. Protein synthesis occurs in two main steps. The very first step we're going to discuss is called transcription. I like to break that word up into a couple of parts. Trans really basically means across and script if you think of when you write in script or if there's a scribe, it means to write. So in this case, we're going to see what transcription really means in terms of protein synthesis. But basically, think about the fact that we're going to be writing something down and it has to travel across somewhere. And you'll see where that becomes significant in a second. The picture that's here just shows a segment of DNA. You can see the A's, the T's, the C's, and the G's. We can recognize the DNA because it has a T. And on this side of our picture, we can see a strand of something called mRNA, which we'll talk about in a minute. This first step of transcription is going to happen inside of the nucleus. So we're inside the nucleus, we're dealing with our DNA. The very first thing that happens is the DNA is used as a template to assemble or to put together and build something called messenger RNA, which we usually abbreviate as mRNA. And it's called a complementary strand. We call it a complementary strand because it's going to be built in a way that we know DNA was paired together. We know that with DNA, we had an A would pair with a T on the opposite side and a C would pair with a G and so on. Well, the messenger RNA pairs in a very similar way. When we look at the messenger RNA and the DNA and the way they pair together, if there's an A on the DNA side, the opposite side when we're putting together the messenger RNA would have another base called uracil, which is abbreviated with a U for that symbol. If the DNA has a T, the messenger RNA A side would assemble an A with that. A G pairs with a C and a C pairs with a G. So you can see that really the main difference is, is that the messenger RNA has a different base in place of a T. It has a U. So in this case, the messenger RNA is used as what's called a messenger. Think of a messenger sending a signal or sending some sort of information somewhere else. And it's sending the information for the DNA code to go to the ribosome. The reason for this is because the DNA doesn't leave the nucleus. If the DNA were to leave the nucleus, it could get damaged. If our DNA is damaged, then the instructions for our organism to survive could be lost. So the DNA stays in the nucleus. We don't want to lose our original, and the DNA is our original message. So we use the DNA as a template. Those of you that are artists, you might have special templates to make like a perfect circle or a perfect square. You can kind of think of DNA in that same manner. We have it as a template, and we don't destroy the template. It's used as a guide to make something new. 
So we've already talked about our messenger RNA bases. A is still adenine. U now is something called uracil, which is going to replace thymine. G stands for guanine, and C stands for cytosine, just like it did in DNA. So we're going to have a complementary strand. So if the DNA had an A, our messenger RNA has a U. If the DNA has a G, on the opposite side, we're going to pair a C with that on our messenger RNA, a C with a G, a C with a G, a T with an A, an A with a U, a T with an A, and a G with a C. Once we get done with this step and we've written down the code from the DNA, that messenger RNA is going to travel through the pores of the nucleus to go on to the next step. Remember, we don't want our DNA to leave the nucleus at all, because if it does, it could get damaged. So that's why we make the messenger RNA. We also don't want to mess up our template or our original. Once it leaves the nucleus, we move on to step two, translation. So you saw in step one, we wrote down the code from the DNA and it moved across the nuclear membrane through the pores. Now we're going to translate that code. Most of you probably don't understand what those A's and T's and C's and G's mean, and your body kind of doesn't really recognize them either. It recognizes amino acids and proteins. It doesn't recognize the DNA code. So we need to translate it into something that the body understands. So during this step, the messenger RNA is going to exit the nucleus through the pores and travel to the ribosome. So here's where our ribosome comes into play to be read, and we'll talk about that in a minute, by something called tRNA. It's called transfer RNA, which is a new molecule now, and it's gonna help us to build a protein. So I'd like you to be able to pause this and try to sketch some of this diagram so you can see what's going on. Our pairing rules when we talk about transfer RNA in this case are going to be similar to what we had before, but in this case, we're gonna have transfer RNA reading the messenger RNA. So it's really two sections of RNA next to each other. So we're not gonna have any T's in this case at all. So the pairing rules, if there's an A on the messenger RNA, we would bring in a U on the transfer RNA, a U with an A, a G with a C, and a C with a G. So once the messenger RNA leaves the nucleus, it's gonna go to the ribosome. This big structure here is representing the ribosome. It's kind of helping to hold things in place. And essentially it has this little holder to hold the messenger RNA in place. And as it holds the messenger RNA in place, the transfer RNA is going to come along and read the messenger RNA in segments of three letters, and they're called codons. So three letters at a time get read, and we call those codons. In this case, you can see that we have a codon that's AUG. In this case, it just so turns out that our body has special codons that tell it when to start making a protein and when to stop making a protein. And the cool thing about that is it's kind of like a sentence. We can recognize the beginning of a sentence because we have a capital letter. Our body recognizes the beginning of a protein by seeing these three letters in the beginning, A-U-G, and it knows we're gonna start making our protein here. It also knows when to stop as well and has a special stop codon. So we're gonna come along and we're gonna read this messenger RNA. We read the first codon, A-U-G, and it follows the base pairing rules for messenger RNA and there's a special transfer RNA that has something called an anticodon on it that's complementary to it using the base pairing rules. So you can see I have an A here, and on my transfer RNA I would have a U. A U would pair with an A on the transfer RNA, and a G on my messenger RNA would pair with a C on the transfer RNA. So a transfer RNA structure that has the UAC anticodon would temporarily bind to this. And each transfer RNA has a special section on it where it has an amino acid attached to it. And that amino acid is specific for that code. So in this case, we bring in a special amino acid that's abbreviated MET. And once it brings that one in and reads that code and gets done, it's going to go ahead and read the next chunk of three letters, next codon, and it's going to do the same thing. So in this case, we have AAG for our transfer RNA, and it's going to bring in another amino acid, PHE, and so on, until we eventually go on to build our entire protein, and it tells us to stop. Now remember, the ribosomes are floating around in the cytoplasm, so we could have multiple proteins being built at the same time in different ribosomes. The idea is, is that each transfer RNA is going to carry one amino acid, 
and that they each have a specific anti-codon. It's going to follow those base pairing rules. And we already mentioned that the messenger RNA has a special start and stop codon to tell it when to start and stop making our protein, kind of like a sentence. So we had two steps with our protein synthesis. The very first step that we had was transcription. So during transcription, remember we started with DNA and it had a codon, TTA, let's say, which are three letters at a time, and this occurs in the nucleus. On our messenger RNA, we would have special codons that would pair up with that following our base pairing rules. So if we had TTA on our DNA, we would have AAU on the messenger RNA. I'd like you to follow along and fill in the rest of the letters for the pairing rules for this particular step for transcription. The next step, translation, we had the anticodons on our transfer RNA reading our messenger RNA strand. So as we're reading our messenger RNA strand, we would have a special codon on here, GAC, that would get read with a complementary code called an anticodon, CUG. And this occurs at the step of the ribosome. In class tomorrow, we're going to practice building some more strands, and we're also going to do a lab that's going to help to reinforce this. You could also start writing some sections yourself and see if you can pair up and practice those base pairing rules along the way. Remember, though, our amino acids, as we put them together and build them, we're going to build what's called a polypeptide chain. Poly, remember, means many, and eventually we'll build that protein.